now it's time for the cargo comparison. This is our coil sprung LR3. And what we're gonna do, it's, it's completely empty right now. Uh, what we're gonna do is just take a measurement from the hub to the top of the fender. That way y'all can do this at home. Uh, it's universal, you can compare with your friends or enemies. And, and just see where things are as far as the compression because it takes tire size out of it. Seeing where we're at here. Roughly, we'll call it 20 and a half right there. Over here, we have all the gear that we're gonna take with us for today. Some of you might have more or less, and a lot of you probably have a lot more. This is a lot of our recovery gear that we're gonna use with us uh, for today. So we're gonna load it in the back and just see where this, this coil system goes with. This is the coil setup we have from Atlantic British. Another point is, I think regardless of where you, you carry it, whether you have a, your spare tire up on the roof or it's gonna be hanging off at the, if you have a, a hitch mount for it or you know on, on the bumper, which would add a lot of weight too. It's all relatively gonna be about the same if you're mid-frame to the rear as far as the compression that it has in the rear suspension. Let's go to the tape, see what we got. Half inch down. So with all that gear, what would you estimate the weight? I, I, I don't know, several hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. um, so we lost a half inch already just from that. That's with no people. Okay, so now let's see what the air suspension holds. All right, so we did our, our cargo comparison for the coil sprung LR3. Now we're gonna cross load everything and put it in the back of the air suspension. LR3, take a measurement and, and see what happens. We've got, call it 21 and a half. is loaded up. Let's see if there's any sag or change from the cargo weight that we have on here. Twenty and a quarter. So we have a one and a quarter sag right now. So let's hop inside, start it up, and see where it goes. Okay. Is it going up? Yeah. Okay. Get myself out of here for weight's sake. 22. We were at 21 and a half. So it actually raised it a half an inch. Okay, so it compensated for the weight of where it wants to be, which is kind of cool. So the results of our cargo comparison is same exact amount of weight. We end up getting a half inch of sag, which you can't change in the, in the coil sprung LR3. And the air suspension, we ended up having uh, initially more sag, but once we started up, it, it, it knows that weight and it compensated for it and lifted it actually a half inch higher. Before we come to a verdict, we're first going to discuss some other points in the vehicle as they relate to functionality. We're talking about the, the front bumper here. You know, we've been holding off on, on what to get for our uh, black LR3. There's a couple different options out there. Webb, what do, you, what do you think about this ARB? Uh, it's beautiful, <laughs> but it's not functional. You can't see your rope, so you know, don't know if you're what, uh, tearing your rope up or stacking it up too much on there. Uh, the To reach the release, it's... it's it, my hand has been caught in there. So we were just showing here in the dust, if y'all can see. I've, I've had some friends that have cut out this portion to make it bigger, and, and you guys said you've actually cut the whole, the whole piece? We've cut the whole area out of it. So you could actually reach the right. rope. And then make sure you're pairing it properly and putting it in. Yeah. Okay, we might do that. I think that's a good idea. And then what else? What about the angles down here? 
right here, if you have to pull it on an angle, yep. I mean, it's always, you never want to. If you do, the fairly is too far back, okay? So I would be rubbing up against yeah. here. Yep, and you're cutting your rope. Okay. Okay, if you're on cable, it's all right, you'll just cut the bumper. <laughs> Okay. There's always a point to it, okay? Uh, the other point with mine, I have an ARB on the Wrangler, is I actually bent the mounting spots down in there, where the winch is mounted, and I pulled on it too hard and bent the mounting. I had to take it back apart, straighten it, and weld it where they should have welded it from the factory. Okay. To fix that. There's a lot, little things that could really make this bumper better, but most people are looking for beautiful. That's what they got. <laughs> yeah, and then you're saying like you could probably either get machined or maybe even double up fair leads to bring it out. To bring the fair lead out, and then it would in improve your ability to pull at an angle if you had to. Yeah. And let's face it, a lot of times when you are having to pull, you're typically <laughs> at an angle, and, and depending on where your anchor spots are. So that's that's some good feedback. I also noticed that you know when we put this on compared to the stock bumper and a couple of the other aftermarket ones. I think we actually lose a little bit of approach angle just by the way it's it's sticking out. I mean, you know, over over stock you gain some uh, approach here, but just because the front uh, sticks out a bit, a bit more, it's harder to put the meat on the rocks or whatever you're you happen to be crawling over. Let's talk about the anchor points. So some of the other aftermarket ones have two different anchor points for towing. This one just utilizes the stock Land Rover anchor point, which is pretty low down there if you did need to get pulled out, right? It's great until you're down in the mud. Once you're down in the mud or down in the snow drift, it's a, a bit difficult to reach. Uh, a lot of the times, more than likely the engineering, is something to do with the crash ability of this boat. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> that may be having something to do with the anchor points, but. Okay, I can see that. Like a good engineer yeah. would find a way to get an anchor point on it where you could actually get a shackle. You know, we still need to upgrade to a thimble versus this crappy hook that we have on currently. So there you have it, knowledge, power. The official payload of the LR3 is 1,325 pounds, and we're not sure how that functionally changes with the coil conversion. Our intent is to get you to think about your own particular setup and how weight might affect performance. Consider and weigh, pun intended, all the aftermarket options, roof racks, rooftop tents, long range fuel tank, heavy duty front and rear bumpers, skid plates, body armor, and then all the equipment inside like storage shelves and refrigerators and recovery gear. What do you really need? What will you actually use? Are you an overlander or an off-roader? Thinking on this will not only save you money, but potentially lots of frustration as well. All right, our cargo comparison is complete. Sorry, Coil Sprung LR3, you are not the winner. You didn't handle the cargo as well. The air proved superior. And here we go. So our score is two to one. Please stay tuned. Next week, we're bringing to you, we're gonna be out in the sand, seeing how the air versus coil performs. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you get updated of next week's video. If you like what we're doing, please support our veteran programs by donating at militarymobility.com. We are a 501c3 nonprofit and have no paid salaries. 100% of our funding goes towards running courses for veterans in need. Another easy way to support our veteran programs is by subscribing. You can also choose us as your Amazon Smile beneficiary. This is at no cost to you as Amazon pledges to donate a portion of their profits from your purchase.